You know, MAGA World was very excited recently because they thought they caught one of their least favorite comedians, Jon Stewart, in some hypocrisy. And so they were all celebrating, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and mocking Jon Stewart for the story that I'm about to explain to you. And unfortunately for them, Jon Stewart correctly turned around and mocked them back because the story is not at all what they're portraying it to be. So what am I talking about? Well, recently, Jon Stewart did a great segment where he dismantled and debunked the idea that Trump's fraud that he engaged in, that now he has this massive judgment to pay because of, is victim victimless. And uh, I've addressed this a few times recently, and it's a nonsense talking point. But because of that, he was put in the crosshairs of MAGA ire. And they uncovered a scandal of all scandals. And essentially, they accused uh, Jon Stewart of engaging in the very fraud that Donald Trump engaged in. Now, that didn't happen, but I'll walk you through the details. So the New York Post reported Jon Stewart benefited by 829% overvalue of his New York home, even though, uh, or I should say, even as he labels Trump's civil case not victimless. And you have people like Mark Levin, who's just one of the strangest Fox hosts you've ever seen. He, uh, very dramatic, I guess you could say. But he said, hey, Johnny Stewart, is this true? Oh, we got him. Here we go. Hypocrite. But then, not exactly as they portrayed. Really quickly going to pause your viewing of this segment to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's so helpful to grow the show. Just make sure that subscribe button is clicked and click the like button as well. Back to the video. The Daily Beast reports, Jon Stewart mocks New York Post story questioning his penthouse sale. Jon Stewart responded with characteristic Wit Wednesday after a New York Post story centered around a right-wing commentator's tweet tried to depict the com uh, Comedy Central host as a hypocrite after he criticized Donald Trump's justification of bank fraud as a victimless crime. By the way, the law and order people, really? Now, after someone violates the law, you want to have a conversation about, yeah, but did their violation of the law hurt enough people? Come on. Law and order, baby. You violate the law, you're held accountable. That's what's happening. The Post quoted podcaster Tim Poole, who baselessly wondered whether Stewart committed fraud when he sold his New York City penthouse for $17.5 million in 2014. The publication based its conclusion on the fact that assessor records from that year showed the property's estimated market value sitting at $1.882 million, according to the Post. The property's assessor valuation was under $850,000. And then it gives you the context about the segment that uh, I previously mentioned. Then it points to Stewart's post here. OMG, I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified documents, bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab P words, discriminate in housing, cheat at golf and foment insurrection and you'll revere me. Speaking to MAGA. Now what's going on here? Uh, in terms of the accurate assessment of what took place. While Trump presented his inflated property values to lenders in order to get favorable loans, Stewart sold his property to a buyer who was willing to pay $17.5 million, which is an entirely different scenario. Obviously, Stewart did not, for instance, submit documents tripling the size of his penthouse like the former president did with his own in Trump Tower. Additionally, it is quite common for a property's assessed value and its market value, what someone would pay for it, to vary according to Ford, with the latter often being higher. So I've tried to explain this before to MAGA, but they're just not listening. Uh, and we've done this when talking about Trump and his claim that Mar-a-Lago is the most valuable uh, property in the history of humanity or whatever. And he gets very upset that the judge uh, accepted the property value of $18 million. And Trump says, it's not 18 million, it's 1 billion or 2 billion or 100 billion or a trillion. Then he just ups it every single time. And the distinction that he just can't get through his head, and then MAGA goes right along with it, is the difference between the assessed value of a property and the market value, right? The assessed value for the purposes of taxes versus if you can go out there because the market's hot, 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 or because a bunch of people are really interested in your property and sell it for way more than its assessed value, get it. 
<laughs> bring home the bacon. Great. Good for you. Uh, but the fact that you were able to sell it for so much more than its assessed value for whatever reason isn't fraud, <laughs> obviously. And that's different than, as was pointed out in this article, tripling the size of your penthouse in official documents. Hmm. And then using that inflated size and inflated value to get a loan that you're not deserving of, thus victimizing other people who could have received that money. But again, either through misunderstanding or miscommunication, the MAGA folks just ignore that distinction. And so now they're thinking that John Stewart did the same fraud as Donald Trump when they just need to have explained to them assessed versus market value. My goodness. Now, <laughs> friend of the show, David Pakman, refers to something called MAGA brain worms. And if we're saying this is a case of that, the John Stewart story, I have another case of that for you. Mediate reports. MAGA state representative claims illegal invaders arrived in Detroit by plane. And before I read the rest of that headline, let me just walk you through this correctly. So there's these photos, okay? And Matt Mad Doc said, <laughs> happening right now, the uh, three buses just loaded up with illegal invaders at Detroit Metro. Anyone have any idea where they're headed with their police escort? So the... MAGA lens version, right? If you're looking through your MAGA glasses, you look at three buses. Oh my goodness. Look, guys, three buses at the airport getting loaded up with um, undocumented immigrants with a police escort. Now, <laughs> even before we learned who was in the bus, uh, people were saying, Hey, what if it's this or what if it's this? And I saw correct guesses even before it was confirmed about who these buses were actually for. And so then I'll read the rest of that headline. Turns out to be Gonzaga men's basketball team in town for March Madness. So just to clear up for you, MAGA, these buses were not undocumented immigrants getting a police escort to wherever but March Madness basketball players. Now, I don't really even want to spend time because it'll make me sad and angry contemplating why it was that he said these were undocumented immigrants in much crazier verbiage uh, or language, illegal invaders, he says. But you can, you know, assume the conclusion there pretty vile stuff so yikes the MAGA brain worms or in language that I'm more comfortable using if you look through the MAGA glasses the MAGA lens then you see something very inaccurate and take them off the world is so much more beautiful when you take off your MAGA glasses make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel